Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercrest, and welcome back to Let's Play Demon's Crest for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. In the first video, we completed the Colosseum area, which is area number one here on the map. And now we need to go through the other areas of the game in order to get back our former power, get the crests, and just overall beat this game. Now, flying around on the overworld map, because this is where we are now. Left and right lets you rotate, up lets you move forward. You cannot move backwards. This isn't like the Wind Walker or the Space Capsule from Secret of Evermore. You can only move to the side and forward in that set. Also, you'll be hearing the wings flapping nonstop. If you want to land somewhere, you just kind of need to be near it and facing the general direction of it, and then you have to hold Y to drop down. And, of course, the other buttons do nothing, except for Start. Start takes you to this map, and you can use left and right to aim yourself towards the place you want to go to, and then you can press Start to go back to the overhead mode and you can easily go where you want to go just by going forward there are a few places that I want to go to such as this house inside this house is a little mini game that we can play it has been a long time since a customer has visited my shop welcome to the shop of Trio the Pago we specialize in gaming for demons. And this is level one and is easy, if you know how to do it. The entrance fee is five GP. You seem to be very good at headbutts. I invite you to test your skill in my humble shop. Will you? Yes. Yes, I will. Thank you. Are you familiar with the rules? For the purposes of this let's play, we will say no. It's child's play. Destroy as many skulls as you can as they come out of the holes in the wall. You have time until all the torches fade out. The torches are right there in the upper right hand corner of the room. You can see them burning brightly fairly easily. If you destroy 12 skulls within the time limit, I'll give you 5 GP for each remaining torch. Is that clear enough? What if I say no? Okay, we just go back through the rules. Okay, get ready. Start. Okay. Fingers on A and B. And you just really need to pay attention to what you're doing here. I'll be explaining stuff after I do this. All right. Oh my gosh, hit the thing already. So, you have to time your headbutts when you're either jumping up or dropping down with the A button. To hit the topmost skulls, you have to hold B and then press A while you're still going up in the air and if you can time it right, you can hit those easily. If they're at the lowest level, you can just be on the ground and headbutt them. But for the three middle levels, you have to headbutt while you're dropping down. And the higher they are, the more easily, or rather, the more quickly you're going to have to press A to time your headbutt right. And thankfully, we can go up to this guy and talk to him again after the torch is reset. And thankfully, we don't have to go through the rules a second time. We should know how to do this by now. And of course... You kind of have to line yourself up with the skulls pretty well. Of 
And I could have done that fairly easily. And with three swords instead of two, but, well, I kind of messed up that second to last one. Wonderful. Great. That was a work of art. Here is your prize. Take it. And we get two silver GP coins. So there are three kinds of GP in the game. The small gold coins are worth one. The silver coins, like the ones we just picked up, are worth five. And the big gold ones with the skulls on them are worth 20. And we will need them in order to buy things in the game. Now there are two shops to the right, or to the north here. Well, in the direction we're going. One of them lets us buy spells, and the other one lets us buy potions. However, I don't want to go to either of those just yet. Instead, I want to go to this skull that is right here. This is area number three. There's something I need to get here. And I could probably get other things as well if I just do things correctly. So let's hover over here. Take care of these guys. This flying enemy, which takes two hits to kill. If I can somehow... Really? If I can somehow... Get up top just a little bit. From here. I may be able to get something that I would really like to get my hands on. Of course, it would also help if enemies wouldn't fly directly at me. Well, at least I got some health refilled. And some gold. That always helps. Can I get near you? Well, I guess I can do it that way. Here's what I wanted to get. Another urn. Do want to get that. Because that'll allow me to carry a second potion, and not just one. After these enemies, the worms, you only you have to hit them in the face, which looks pretty much like a skull. Takes two hits. And the flying enemies with one eye take two hits as well. And of course, I've already mentioned the coins. And I can't leave the same way I came in. So, I'm going to have to lose all my hit points. And by doing that, you made a pretty cool death animation where your flesh melts and you turn into a destroyed skeleton. Kind of reminds you of Arthur's death in the Ghoul, Ghost and Goblin series, which, of course, Demon's Crest and the Gargoyle's Crest games are based on. And once you die, you can either replay the stage, select the stage, or end your game. And if you end your game, you get a password. I'm going to go ahead and select a stage. You don't really have lives in this game. Like, you do, but you just either get to replay the level, select a different level, or just end the game and get a password. Which is always cool. Anyway, let us now go over here, and I believe this lets us get our spells. Yes, this is the magic shop. Welcome to the Wise Man, a shop of spells. And we have four spells to choose from. Shadow is a barrier of darkness which will surround and protect you. Basically, shadow increases your defense. Hold. Your enemies will hold in one place for a short time. Will you buy the spell? Hmm, not really. There's Imp. An imp will appear and work for you. However, you must have money to keep him employed. Will you buy this spell? And shock. The earth will quake and the enemies on the ground will be damaged. Will you buy the spell? I'm going to go ahead and use shadow here because I'm probably more than likely going to need it for what's up ahead. And if you try to buy another spell and you don't have any clear sheets of vellum, you automatically get kicked out as soon as you press yes. If you have no blank vellums, and you also enter the shell shop with no clear vellums, you get told, look, you're filled to the brim with spells. Get out of here. And you automatically leave. Same thing goes for po potions as far as the urns that you collect go. 
Now, thankfully, when we died and went back to the overworld map, we kept the second urn that we got in Area 3. So we'll have two urns to fill up instead of just one. Welcome to the Black Lotus. We only carry the finest potions. Which one would you like? And we have four potions to pick from. Mercury. This potion enables you to escape from an enemy. It allows you to teleport to the beginning of a level. We're not buying it. Sulfur. This potion enables you to flee from a battle. This teleports you, force you back from the world, or back to the world map. We're not buying that either. Herb. Five health. This potion will restore some of your vitality. Will you buy this? Not quite sure yet. Actually, no, I'm just going to buy two herbs. And elixir, which is a hundred I can barely afford. This potion grants you an extra life. In other words, if you die with, an el with the elixir in your possession, and I believe you have to have it equipped too, and you have to use it before you die, you get revived with four hits. I'm not going to buy that. Instead, I'm just going to buy two herbs. And, of course, we're told we already have enough potions. And just to verify, if you go back with all of your urns full, you get told to leave. Well, you have to approach him first. Your urn is already full of potions. Well, at least he's friendlier on the reminders compared to the magic guy. Now it's time to go to Area 2. And we're going to aim ourselves in the general direction there. The two smaller red circles with the yellow one out in front. That's pointing at where we want to go. We've got it pointed at where we want to go. Let's hold it up. And then carefully make our way forward here. We need to go a little bit further. There we go. And now we've reached a village. And there are some things that we can do here. For instance, we can get a coin. And I might as well go ahead and show off the ground gargoyle. So the Y button lets you choose the, a projectile that travels across the ground. You can't fly, but if you hold A, you can do this charge attack that lets you bust through things, which is pretty cool. And if you fire the projectile for the ground go-go while you're in the air, it just travels straight forward and it has a very limited range. It works better on the ground a little bit, as you'll soon see. And we can't get to these urns yet. We can't get the rose pots yet and break them. And despite looking like a building from the human world, this is clearly a building in the demon world and there are skeletons stuck in that room for some reason. There are just skeletons st stored in that room for reasons I could not even explain. And if you go over to the fountain in the center of the area here, hey you, I haven't seen you around here before. Are you a stranger here? You get different hints depending on whether you select yes or no. If you select yes, they say that the red demon known as Firebrand has ridden, risen. He nearly burnt the demon realm to ashes years ago. If Phalanx had not rescued us, we would all be dead thanks to that arrogant fool Firebrand. Take care of yourself. So, I'll just mention it right here. We are playing as Firebrand. We're basically the anti-hero of this story. And Phalanx is the demon who beat us to take all the crests in the intro to this game. Obviously, if we want to, to beat the game, we need to beat Phalanx. And if you approach this guy and say, No, did you hear that the red demon Firebrand escaped from the Colosseum? Yeah, we were just there. I heard that General Arma is hunting him down. General Arma, we fought him in the first episode. And we got the Crest of Earth and the ability to play as the Grand Gargoyle from him. At the end of Area 1. Now for this part. the These little statues can do two things. They can shoot fire up above and the two statues little demons that are carrying the torch, they can spit fireballs at you. 
And I'm going to break this. And I was hoping that wouldn't happen. So the mermen. If you approach them and they let their arms down. Okay, fine. Be that way. Jerk. If they let their... If you get close enough to them and they let their arms down, back away because that means that get, they're going to jump up. Like so. And thankfully, if you're super close to them, you can wipe them out within like a second. These ghosts take two hits to the feet and they can be a pain in the butt. And they just disappear and just get out of your way afterwards. And I'm just getting away from everybody. And I'm just going to pick up some money. Also, don't go in the water. You will be stuck in the water. And the longer you're in the water, the more health you're going to lose until you eventually die. There is a form. There is a way to breathe underwater, so to speak. But we won't be getting that until a bit later. And now we are in the third section of this of this area. The hands will reach out and just hold you in place. They don't really damage you. And these guys near the piles of skulls. Oh, this guy tries to eat at us, but, well, we stop that from happening. And these guys that are flying around with the night armor. Really? These guys flying around with the nine armor, they're only vulnerable from behind. You gotta be kidding me. I am do having the worst luck here. And I want to see if I can get my health back. Well, that's one way to do it, I suppose. And apparently, if you get it close enough to these guys, they do come at you. And apparently, there is nothing that comes from hitting these those guys. And I'm... <clears throat> I'm trying to get Grand Gorgold, and I can't to get it going. And apparently, Ground Gargoyle can't hit the hands. I want to refill my health, and I can't seem to do it here for some reason. Unless... There we go. Why was that so painfully... so painfully hard? Okay. We got four hits. We're back to three. Come on. I cannot do anything right. Apparently. Can I get this guy back on screen? Yes, I can. This is... Not a fun way of... Getting my health back, I do have to admit. And the chances of me getting my health back, not the best, clearly. This is not how I expected to spend several minutes of my time trying to do anything here. I think it's better if I just use the ground gargoyle to take care of all this. At least that way. I can get some health.
Oh, jeez. If I don't get at least some health back after a couple of minutes, I'm just gonna give up and I'm just gonna go right to the next area. And I really don't feel like resetting and starting this whole part over, but... I'm willing to go through a little bit of sacrifice of time here just to get some health back and... Wow, this really isn't going my way. Okay. <laughs> just run, I guess. And wow, the pickups are not very forgiving. Clearly. I'm just going to go ahead and just do this. And I've already got one of my potions equipped. So I might as well just see what I can do here. And here is this guy. Want to hit him whenever you can. You definitely want to keep yourself from getting cornered by this guy whenever possible. You definitely don't want him doing that. You don't, don't want him run, raising his skiff arm at you, or a sword arm, I guess. And of course, you want to heal yourself whenever necessary, really. And you definitely want to keep your distance and also get away from him however you can. That way. You can just keep away from him and just... Defend yourself, I guess. Yeah, you just want to... Really? Well, I guess I might as well do this. So, you can either equip one spell or one potion at any given time. And I kind of had to push it there, but I managed to make it work. Now you see why I wanted to bring two urns with me, full of herbs, and shadow, which apparently seemed to be pretty useless. But we have beaten this guy, and we have gotten another health extension, which is good. And sadly, I can't tell how much I've got as far as... What is it? potions are concerned, or money. I have 108. So I might as well go ahead and get two more herbs. The herbs refill five units of health. And Shadow was supposed to increase your defense, but it just felt really useless right there. And I don't want to use Imp because I use it in the practice run and it the imp did not attack the boss enemy at all. So let me see what I can get as far as spells are, are concerned. And yeah, I just don't see myself using anything here. So I might as well mention again how equipping stuff works you can select a spell or potion with the Y button and the control pad you can't unequip vellums you can't unequip potions you can only have one spell or one potion equipped at a time and if you want to use that spell or that potion you press X that's how I was able to heal those two times against the Area 2 boss. And now that I have some things done and I have all that I can p get for now, I want to head to Area 3. But 
I do want to grind for some money first before I do anything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Coliseum and just keep going through it over and over. Thankfully, when you beat a boss in any area, you don't have to worry about beating it ever again. So going through the Coliseum multiple times just to get everything Mega Man style is a bit of a snap. And it's absolutely worth it. Just to, just for all of the GP that I can get my hands on. So, join me next time when I have a lot more GP and I head to Area 3. Or I may have the Area 4, depending on how things are going for me at a time. We'll see. Until then, this is Prince Watercrest. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching!